must be equal to 4 minus, okay, well, what's 3? 3 is 11 minus 4 times 2. So minus 11 minus 4 times 2, that's what 3 is, times 1. Let's multiply out the brackets. 1 is equal to 4 minus 11 times 1 gives us minus 11 times 1. Minus times minus gives us a plus. 4 times 2 times 1 gives us 4 times 2. Okay. Well now, how many 4s have we got? We have 3 of them. Okay, so 1 must be equal to 4 times 3 minus 11 times 1. Okay. Now what we do is we take our 4 and our 11, okay? Our 4 and our 11, and we back substitute, okay? So continually, okay, back substituting in respect to not the quotient, okay, but the remainders. That's important, okay? So well, what's 4 equal to? 4 must be equal to, okay, I'm just going to come down a little bit, a little bit down the page here. So we must have 1 is equal to, well, what's 4? 4 is 15 minus 11 times 1. So it must be 15 minus 11 times 1, okay? That's what 4 is, times 3, okay? Minus, well, what's 11 equal to? 11 is equal to 26 minus 15 times 1. So it's 26 minus 15 times 1 times, that's what 11 is, times the 1. Now I know this is a little bit tricky and complicated, but the important thing is that when we're back substituting, we only back substitute into the remainders, yeah? Okay? So the non-remainders I have inside these brackets, yeah? So just keep keep track of them. So now what we do is multiply out the brackets. We don't actually multiply out the numbers. We just, we just I suppose, juxtapose them together. So 15 times 3 is 15 times 3. Minus times minus 11 times 1 times 3 is minus 11 times 3. Over here, minus 26 times 1 is minus 26 times 1. Minus times minus gives us a plus, and 15 times 1 times 1 gives us 15 times 1. Let's bring what's common together, okay? So this gives us 1 is equal to, well, there's, fifth, there's 3 15s here, and there's 1 of them here, so that gives us 4 of them. So it's 15 times 4 minus 11 times 3, minus 26 times 1, okay? Now what's important here is this, is that we don't try to substitute into the 15 and the 26, because this is what we require, okay? Uh, but we can substitute this remainder here, 11, yeah? Okay, 11 is equal to 26 minus 15 times 1. So this is going to give us 1 is equal to 15 times 4, minus, well 11 is 26, minus 15 times 1 times the 3 minus the 26 times 1. Let's multiply out the brackets. That gives us 1 is equal to 15 times 4 minus 26 times 3 is minus 26, or it's minus 3 26s, which is 26 times 3. Minus times minus gives us a plus. 15 times 1 times 3. Well, 1 times 3 is 3, so that gives us 15 times 3 minus the 26 times 1. Okay, and let's bring the commonality together. Okay, so this gives us a value of 1 is equal to, there's, there I suppose there's 4 15s here, just 3 of them there, it gives us 7, so this is 15 times 7, minus, there's 3 26s, and there's one of them here, and they're negative, minus 26 times 4. Okay, so what we've actually done here is we've put this into what's known as a Diophantine equation. Yeah. Now, if we look at this in a little bit more detail, okay, this is the most important line here for us. Okay, what we've done is through back substitution, okay, we figured out, okay, with respect to our GCD of our two numbers, fifteen and twenty-six, what we figured out is this: is that one is equal to fifteen times seven minus twenty-six times four. Let's have a look at that. In a, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. So what we're saying is one is equal to fifteen times seven minus twenty-six times four. Okay. Uh, now we're looking for the multiplicative index in inverse of fifteen. Okay. That's what we need. Okay. Is to is to is to decrypt. We need the inverse of what our previous a was, and a was 15. So we need to know what is the inverse of 15. So what is the, 
multiplicative, multiplicative, okay, inverse of 15. Now don't forget, it's all modulo 26, okay? Really what I'm looking for is this, is I'm asking, can we find a number x that when we multiply by 15, okay, that's congruent, that ends up being congruent to 1 modulo 26. Or really what we're asking is, can we find a number that we multiply by 15, okay, and after we divide in by 26, the remainder is equal to 1. Okay, now let's have a look at this here. Okay, so we have 1 is equal to 15 times 7 minus 26 times 4. Okay, so let's do some modulo, modulo 26 arithmetic on this, okay. Well, uh, 26 times 4, modulo 26, okay, uh, well that goes in, it goes in 4 times with a remainder of 0. So, mod 26, okay, what we have here is that this here goes to 0. Okay? Now, we have to get mod 26 right across the board here, okay, so what we have is modulo, so 1 mod 26, okay, must be equal to 15 times 7 minus 26 times 4 modulo 26, okay? Now, 1 mod 26 is just 1, okay? So we have 1 must be equal to, well, 15 times 7 modulo 26 minus 26 times 4 modulo 26. Now we know that 26 times 4 modulo 26 is simply equal to 0. So what we end up with now is this, is that 1 modulo 26 is equal to 15 times 7 modulo 26. Okay. Or what we're saying is that after we divide 15 times 7 by 26, what we end up with is, is 1, okay? which is by definition the inverse uh, of 15. So in this case here, okay, we have 7 is the inverse of 15 modulo, modulo 26. Okay, guys, uh, I know that was a little bit involved there, okay, but the, the main process in any to find these multiplicative inverses, okay, is uh, we have an alphabet size. In our case, our alphabet size is 26. We have, for our refined cipher, we have chosen our A, uh, which is relatively prime to 26, and we know that through successive divisions, successive applications of the Euclidean algorithm, because the last common, the last non-zero divisor is 1. So this tells us that 15 is relatively prime to 26, or the largest or the greatest common divisor is, is 1. Now, when we take this line here, 4 is equal to 3 times 1 plus 1, okay? This remainder 1 is what we're interested in, yeah, okay? And when we back substitute for 3 and 4, okay, when we back substitute for 3 and 4 based off these remainders, okay? Uh, what we end up doing is we're substituting, back substituting until we end up with 1 being equal to some multiple of 15 plus, or minus in this case, some multiples of 26, the two numbers that we started with, okay? Now once we get this particular line here, okay, what we know is that this particular value here is our inverse that we're looking for, okay? I'll do another example of this uh, particular calculation in our next video. Once again, guys, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope that video was somewhat helpful.